Good morning guys. So we're just leaving um, the tower camp now. Quite a restless night of sleep actually with the cicadas uh, yesterday. Um, they went to sleep probably about 11 and then uh, when I got up at around 3 they were at it again. So about four hours of uh, you know silence and just the constant drone of uh, cicadas in between but otherwise um, you know a good night's sleep I um, heard the lions and uh, hyenas and uh, there was a scops owl and one other bird that I can't place my finger on uh, at the moment that just kept on calling through the night um, I'll add the sound now Hopefully someone can uh, actually help identify what that bird is. Um, so today we got a full day in the park, uh, heading up towards Mopani from Lotaba now, because we will be um, camping at Shingwetsi this afternoon. So the plan is to head up um, on the tar road and then catch the S48 loop and then the S50, um, 49 and Tropic of Capricorn route uh, after that. It's just going about uh, quarter to six and the gate opens at uh, 5.30 so uh, not too bad on, on the exit time. I, I heard the lions almost to the east of camp so I think on the other side of the Lataba River. Um, but I'm not too sure if there's any routes that would take us past where they would be. Um, so Lataba Camp, uh, you exit and you head west and then you can head north-south uh, on the tar road or on the dirt loops. But there isn't really a, a route east unless you get across the river and then come back on I think it's the Mingerhout loop but uh, that one's a bit confusing I think this is a tawny up on the tree there the Mingerhout loop is a bit confusing so I don't want to spend too much time in that loop and then you know trying to get out again I would love to spend uh, a little bit of the early hours on the Tropic of Capricorn loop so we're going to try and make our way there as fast as possible. A few stops on the way but uh, we'll take it as we come. Okay guys, we got a cheetah that's just woke up and moved now. Let's see if I can get a shot. Oh, it's on a kill actually, so it's got a impala that it's taken down. Quite a heavily pregnant female impala. So I'm just going to try and position to get some shots actually.
morning. So, a bit of a struggle to shoot through the bushes, but hopefully we've got some good footage. Um, cheetahs around Latava. Uh, oh, there's just a blackback jackal moving in now towards where the cheetah has its kill. But um, cheetahs around Latava, um, you don't expect them because of the thick Mopani and for for her to or him him or her to have a kill in the thick Mopani is also quite surprising because they normally like the more open plains so they can use their speed. But obviously this one's been successful so maybe she or oh, he has a strategy for hunting in the Mopani. Okay, we're gonna leave the cheetah to her kill. Um, the cheetah was struggling to almost get the belly open, so um, also I didn't want to really see that happening. Um, so I skipped away quickly. Um, I think one of the important lessons um, just on that particular sighting is that um, even with you know all the modern cameras and, and uh, you know eye autofocus animal eye autofocus and things like that sometimes you're gonna have to manually focus because the sighting is in a thick bush or um, is uh, this uh, distractions or obstructions in front of the um, sighting itself so I tried my best to manual focus on the cheetah and get both video and uh, stills with the manual focus so hopefully it worked So, this road sign is not where it's meant to be. 
I'm assuming it was brought there by elephants. <laughs> Just a quick update. Um, I saw a African golden Oreo on the main road on the H16. So that species number 489 for me. So one closer to 500. Uh, we're just on the S48 now and we're going to go up the S48 and then join the main road again at the end of it. So unlike many of the other camps uh, in the Kruger, um, Opani's restaurant is uh, set almost at the back of the camp. So we have to drive through most of the camp to get to it. Um, but this does allow it to be set on the um, Pioneer Dam, which uh, gives you quite a nice view as you are sitting and having your meal uh, in the restaurant. I stopped uh, to have breakfast but um, spied a pie on the menu so I decided to grab that and then after breakfast I was going to make my way up to Shinguetsi but uh, found a water feature at the front of the restaurant where there was a group of village weavers you know busy on their nests and um, then I saw some Diedrichs uh, which were quite active as well, uh, actively calling um, and I think there were three three birds in total and I decided to you know spend some time trying to get some photos of them because it's not often that you see these birds um, out in the open or as close as uh, you know just scanning and watching them and then I noticed that, uh, you know, the weavers are very, were very um, cautious about these birds and were keeping an eye on these birds. And um, eventually I saw the female um, Deidre Cuckoo um, on a limb of a uh, tree. And, you know, she was being very quiet. She wasn't calling. And I think it was because she was waiting for her opportunity to jump into one of these village weaver nests and go lay eggs and suddenly um, you know she did exactly that 
Um, but what almost surprised me is that as she was making her way into the nest, um, the village weaver that owned that nest almost caught onto her um, and, and grabbed her tail and was attacking her with his beak um, to try and get her to get out of the nest. Um, and uh, this all happened, you know, within the space of, you know, 10 minutes. I started observing the Dijiks, um, I think it was around half past 10, and at around quarter to 11, this Dijik uh, female uh, decided to make her move and get into the nest. And it was almost astonishing because I was, for the longest time, the only one watching all of this drama unfold. Uh, oh well, to me it was high drama, but to um, you know some of the other tourists, it was just you know birds, weaver birds on a nest. Um, and I pointed it out to a couple guys, but no one seemed to stay, uh, you know, and and watch it. But for me, this was you know quite uh, a scene because I've never seen something like this happen before. And um, the village weaver was almost tenacious in trying to defend his nest um, from the female DJ going in and, and laying her eggs because obviously you know if she did lay her eggs he was going to be then raising a cuckoo chick instead of his own uh, village weaver chicks and then it got me wondering you know if uh, it was just a male on the nest why he was defending this nest so uh, vigorously because they do build you know a number of nests and abandon nests quite regularly the female uh, weaver will come through and you know inspect the nest and if it's not up to scratch then he'll have to tear it down and, and build another one so it got me wondering you know why would this bird try to defend this nest so vigorously if the option to just abandon the nest almost knowing that there were Dijik's uh, cuckoo's eggs inside the nest that he could abandon and, and you know then nothing would come of it because he could build another nest and get a female to lay in that nest and thereby you know ensure that he's raising village weaver chicks and not a uh, Dijik's cuckoo but uh, thinking about it, I think what could have been a possibility is that he's had a female already come through and laid eggs in the nest already. So if he did abandon the nest, it would have been abandoning his own eggs as well. And, you know, that's also a lot of effort. Um, so this male weaver, you know, spent a good 10 to 12 minutes defending his nest, pecking at the Dirich's uh, tail feathers, almost pulling out a few, um, you know, while he was at it. And then eventually she gave up and uh, flew across to a branch uh, across the way. And you could see you know how much effort that took of her because she was panting in the heat of the day so an exciting uh, time at Bapani camp I got in just to have breakfast and ended up spending about an hour and a half with all the bird activity uh, but now I'm back on the road. It's half past 11 and I need to make my way up to uh, Shinguetsi. It's about 60 kilometers to Shinguetsi uh, or just over 60 kilometers I think to Shinguetsi from Mopani camp. So um, just over an hour of driving at the speed limit. Uh, not taking into account any um, sightings and things like that but it's the middle of the day and sightings will probably be quite rare anyway 
so I'm gonna try and get in um, get myself checked in if I can and then uh, set up a tent like I did uh, yesterday but uh, today I just need to also make myself uh, lunch and then I'll head out um, for the afternoon drive so yeah an exciting morning but let's see what the afternoon holds as well.